Welcome to Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. We're going to talk about Green Arrow because it's been about four years since we've done that. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. I was what? like, oh, I remember They're doing so this. so popular. Yeah, we, I, well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but Green Arrow is big. Oh, when we were doing it, we were like, we're going to catch so much runoff from, from the, the, the Green Arrow wellspring series. of the show. Yeah. Right. No. Absolutely not. Those well, that's because it's such a, a great show. show. Oh, yeah. Solid show and those fans. There's a big crossover. Anytime you make like a movie or a show based on a comic book, get ready, comic book stores and publishers, to reap the benefits of dabbling in other media because, trust me, the cup runneth over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all those, uh, all those like teenagers watching the CW, they like love... Going well, they're like, okay, they have, they have so much disposable income. Not yeah, only that they, too, they have yeah. the disposable income, they're watching the show, the season ends, and they're like, oh my god, I don't know if I can wait another year. Yeah. Then so they run in droves to the comic book stores yeah. to get I as much Green Arrow books as books that are like can. just like that show. I gotta just cram it down my throat. I need as much content yeah. as possible. And then they look at Green Arrow and go, why is he wearing a costume? He, he has show. a costume of the show, I kind know. of. He has a little hood and everything. Yeah. Which is great, by the way, if you're an archer or any kind of like marksman, mm. you want to lose your periphery. <laughs> So this it's is eyes on the prize. It's Robin Hood reference. I'm looking forward. I, I get it. Green Arrow's a better one. He wears that great Robin Hood hat. That's true. Green yeah, Arrow. That, that looks totally stupid. I think it looks cool, but it only works for Green Arrow. Yeah. And Robin Hood. And a book, I would argue. I think on screen it might look a little weird. I guarantee you they screen tested one time with the hat. Mm -hmm. And they were like, huh, okay, well, that was fun. That's just to remind everybody we're never going to do that. <laughs> this, anyway. This is a very weird duck bill flat kind of hat. Yeah, well, I mean... I think it's just the angle. It's it's. it's oh no! Yeah, it's the hat. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's, it's the Robin Hood hat. I don't no, know. I, I the Robin Hood hat tapers came, off. Comes to a point. Well, the point. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is more historically accurate. Than that's your, true. Than your image in your head. Right. I think a more historically accurate hat would just be something that flops over. <laughs> well, or no hat, because it turns out they didn't wear hats. In right the in the 12th century or whatever. Or whatever. Anyway, reality sucks. Green, <laughs> <laughs> Green Arrow sounds of violence. Is written by Kevin Smith, uh, Yoga Hosers director, Whoa. Uh, also Tusk, and uh, <laughs> oh, drawn well, we're by. we're in for a treat, then. That's right, and drawn by Phil Hester, uh, artist on Green Arrow Quiver, Ooh. and so yeah, this is basically volume two of the Kevin Smith run on Green Arrow. Okay, but it stands on its own, kind of. Well, is this similar to Daredevil? It's similar to Kevin Smith's Daredevil. Oh no! In terms of everyone sounds just like those characters. Ooh. Was there like a, a couple of years between no. volume one and volume two? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No, uh, unlike the Kevin Smith standard where it's like, okay, well, let me take about 11 to 12 years, really get my footing on this book, and then I'll finish the sixth issue. No, uh, he, he did uh, Quiver, and it's literally just, and then the next couple of issues after that was, was Sound of Violence. Okay. Um, this is picking up where Quiver left off because it's literally just the run of Green Arrow that he was writing. Okay. Uh, for some context, if you haven't watched our episode of Quiver, check it over there. But if you want the quick and dirty version, Green Arrow came back to life from having been killed. His son, Connor Hawk, became Green Arrow. And then there were two Green Arrows. Right. Also, Green Arrow, in the chicanery of being resurrected, stopped a creepy, pedophile, rich cultist guy and rescued a prostitute who was like in her 15, 16 and set up his base of operations in his suburban house after he was banished to hell or killed or whatever. Hmm. So Green Arrow I don't has... I remember any of that. It's no. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well... That's what happened. Yeah. Okay. So the point is, Green Arrow came back to life, mm -hmm. definitively and without question. He came back to life. Right. Not that it was retconned. He never no, died. He, he was died. Dead. His his body was resurrected by Hal Jordan Parallax, and then they went to heaven, got his soul, mm -hmm. put it in Stuck the body, it in the body, and then we got both versions of Green Arrow. We got like the grizzled guy who remembers all the continuity and the youthful fun version that Kevin Smith remembered when he used to read comic books. Mm -hmm. So you got this fun Green Arrow. And he now has like a young female sidekick who wants to be a sidekick in the story, but Green Arrow's like, that's a really bad idea. Mm. 
because me and Bruce did that. <laughs> no, so, they're not all dead. Dick Grayson made it. He's the most well-adjusted member of the Bat family. Yeah. Green Arrow is back, and he's got like a teenage former prostitute would-be sidekick. Okay. Named Mia. Mm. That's it. <sighs> got it. What's her sidekick name? She wants to be Speedy, because Speedy is Green Arrow's sidekick name. Um, so she wants to be like the new Speedy. Yes. Okay. What happened to old Speedy? He became Arsenal. Okay. He got himself didn't a, die. Not, well, he, he got, the short version is he got himself a hat, put it on backwards, <laughs> and, and got into drugs and alcohol. Oh. All right. Yeah. But Whoops. being Speedy didn't get him killed. No. So. No, but it didn't help him. <laughs> It probably pushed right. him towards the drugs and yeah. alcohol. He might not have been into the drugs and no. alcohol. No. And the other thing, or... the other thing that Green Arrow is all about is he was a really crappy father to Connor. Mm. And now that he's back, he's like, screw it. I'm going to be a good dad. Mm -hmm. And like Connor's kind of an adult. Right. But like, I'm going to be there. And we're going to like get to know each other better. Okay. And Connor's not like, screw you, dad. Because he's like in his 20s. So he's like, okay. All right. That's all I've ever wanted. I'm a little bit more adjusted to this. No, that's fine. Yeah. And. He's also Green Arrow. And they have a conversation later on. It, do where they they're distinguish like, somehow? Straight up, no. It's just, I'm Green Arrow. I'm Green Arrow. Green Arrow. Be over, I'm going to be Green Arrow over there. You're going to be Green Arrow over here. If anyone says Green Arrow, we both have to turn around. <laughs> like, Which is why case. I'm all the way across the US and you're here. Which is actually kind of funny because later on when they invented Kate Bishop over at the Marvel Universe, mm. she became Hawkeye after Clint died in Avengers Disassembled. Right. And then when he came back after a short stint as Ronan, he was like, I'm going to be Hawkeye, and you're going to be Hawkeye, and screw it. So there were two Hawkeyes. Weird. Yeah, so there were two Hawkeyes and two Green Arrows, but not at the same time. Uh, which one was first? So arrow. Then, yeah, that makes Hawkeye sense. Hawkeye just ripped it off. I guess so. <laughs> but yeah, if you have a guy who shoots arrows, it's okay for there to be two. DC said it was okay. Exactly. And it's very interesting. Well, well and actually, neither of them sell. So, like, who's going to complain? Right. If we have two Hawkeyes, maybe someone will buy one of them. <laughs> no one else is going to buy another book where someone just shoots a bow and arrow. No. Ain't nobody buying Hawkeye 2. No. <laughs> That's why when they did the Hawkeye series, they had both Hawkeyes in the book. Hmm. They are like, no, it's about both of them. All right. Here, you're yeah. getting two Hawkeyes for the price of one. There you have it. Anyway, so the story opens in an alley. And this guy's getting chased down by Green Arrow. And then uh, the new Speedy, which... Kevin Smith titles this issue Ultimate Speedy. I guess it's a play on like the Ultimate Universe over at Marvel, but like kind of like a check it out, it's the new Speedy. Okay. Also, she's like better than the old Speedy. She's Ultimate Speedy. Well, she's got like a crossbow and mm. she's a cute girl. So, you know, like <laughs> yeah. already she beats pre Speedy <laughs> by a country mile. So you're like, whoa, oh, they made me into Speedy. And then we cut to her waking up from her dream being Speedy. Oh. Aww. Uh huh. And so she wakes up, and it's like 7 in the morning, and she's having a rough time and because she hates getting up in the morning. And the, uh, the deal was Mia can live with Ali. Mm -hmm. Right. And stop her prostituting uh -huh. if she goes to school. So she's got to be up for school, which she's ne never been. Oh. Wait. <laughs> oh, she's just going to show up and Well, I mean, like, she's never been to school. The point is she's never been, like, used to getting up in the morning. Yeah. But, like, Yeah. Ollie's kind of rich and stuff, so he can, like, make things happen. Like, he can swing right. things in, like, I'll pay for your good grades. Look, it's public school. <laughs> She'll be fine. Which we all went to. Wait, this is so public, don't school get upset. In, yeah. public school in Seattle. It doesn't matter. You can't take Algebra 2 if, you like, you don't even know, like, sixth grade <laughs> math. Like, <laughs> look, I'm from the streets, and I shoot She's arrows. Street smarts. I got street smarts. I've got, like, I, I can do geometry. Basic, I can do basic, basic addition. Yeah. Because I need to add up money when I'm paid. Right. For what? Uh, nothing. <laughs> so she wakes up and Ollie's cooking and she's like, oh, what are you making? And he's like, oh, I'm making egg McChili. And it says, Ollie's all about making chili. Okay. He makes like crazy spicy chili. Yeah, yeah. We've actually made our own. Mm -hmm. And it's it channel. was delicious. It was delicious. And if you want to find out how delicious, check out the link over Ben's head. Yes, we made a cooking show. So anyway, uh, he, he makes her eat it and she's like, ah, this is too spicy. Like, why would you give, why would you give me that? 7.30 in the morning. It's I want you to have terrible runs so that no boy is attracted to you at your first day of school. Yeah, but don't forget, this is Kevin Smith writing. So he says, would you rather that your face was stuffed with something else? And she's like, oh, I can think of a better option. And then they start making out, and then they're going to bang on the kitchen floor. What? 
and then she wakes up. Oh. Ah! No, 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 no. Damn no. It. It's Inception, Whoa. pre-Inception. <laughs> now I don't trust anything else that happens in this book. Right. right. I promise you, the last this one. is the last one. Okay. The last dream fake out of this issue. Okay. Thanks, of Jeff. this issue. Of this book. Okay. Of this whole book. So uh, she's woken up, and Ollie is Green Arrow, and he's like, hey, I'm back from being Green Arrow all night. Wake up. You got to go to school. And she's like, oh, like, ah, oh, fine. <laughs> you know, right. so she gets up. Please tell me you didn't make breakfast. Uh, she try yeah, no. Uh, she makes a point about how she's like, <laughs> she and he have an amazing conversation in which she's like, I can't believe you let me be late for school. And he's like, you live here, it's your responsibility. And she's like, well, if you want me to go to school, then you should be considerate enough to show up early enough to make sure that I'm not so late that I'm going to not miss school. Uh -huh. It's just... I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's a legit conversation. It's a lot of those conversations. It's a great issue. thing where, like, hey, if you're going to pretend to be a parent, right. you have to be a parent. Well, no. <laughs> be responsible. Set your alarm. In the dream, she has the alarm set. In this, she does not. She didn't even set an alarm. No. She's very responsible. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, oh, she also brings up how she's like, I wouldn't even need to go to school if you just let me be speedy. Mm. And, she, and he's like, no, we'll, we'll talk about that later. And so then he goes to a, like, youth center with Connor. They're mm -hmm. kind of like just doling out food for kids and just kind of getting to know each other a little better. And they're they're giving kids food. And they're talking about how like Mia wants to be speedy. And mm -hmm. Connor's like, well, you're you going to let her? And, and he's she like, even has a crossbow. Oh, she does. Yeah, he discovers it later. And he's like, oh, geez. Mm. <laughs> She's like, I've been practicing. What do you think? And he's like, I think we're going to talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> so he's talking to Connor about it. And Connor's like, I mean, like, yeah, that's 15, 16 is around the age when people like us become sidekicks. So, like, I get it. And he's like, I, I think that's a really bad idea. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to be, like, Bruce Wayne but green. You know, like, where I, like, have... <laughs> like, a ward who is also, like, involved... In a war on crime. In this thing that I, like, killed me. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Well, and I'm, like, really skilled. And I died. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at it. Now, that being said... Green Arrow died. His arm was stuck in a machine in a plane. Yeah. Well, it had nothing to do with, like, fighting crime or being an archer. <laughs> There's just bad timing. No, I mean, he... Wasn't there a bomb? Was it was a bomb. Was, a bomb? He was, he was doing a hero thing. Yeah, he was doing a hero thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be a superhero to die in a hero heroic that's, way. That's what I'm saying. But, like, if you're going to have a ward and you're going to fight crime, eventually they're going to start fighting crime with you. True. I mean, especially if you're in a comic book and you're a superhero. Right. They want to share in your life. Right. Yeah. And Arrow... However, uh, if I work in an office and I have a kid, I my kid's not, them. like, going to show up at the office with a briefcase. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you can separate, yeah, you know, your life. Because that ain't cool. Well, no, also, they have to go to school and, like, l like go through life. They yeah. can't just become a business boy. If I'm an NBA player... Like, my son isn't just, like, inevitably yeah. going to be an NBA player. And if I'm, like, a big studio actor in a big bunch of, like, multi-billion dollar <laughs> well, action movies, my kids aren't just going to de facto become movie stars, right? I mean, they will once I start paying for them to be in movies. Well, you yeah. got to try, Will's though. Myth. you got you to gotta stack the deck. Connor's like, there, it's the DC universe. There's room for her. <laughs> yeah, just let it happen. There's the Titans, the Young Justice, sidekicks. Like, there's a precedent for yeah, this kind of thing. It's not that weird. And also, like, you kind of attract kids to your whole like mystique because like you're a wannabe dad like you want to mm. raise kids like that's all your whole that's your whole thing but you're bad at it right <laughs> like you would prefer kids because they're easier than having a real relationship with someone well oh, that's that's fair it's very that's very deep <laughs> so he goes home and he mulls over the fact that like he's been alive for two weeks but hasn't called dinah aka black canary the true love of his life mm. hmm. he's like i haven't called her and i really should but I'm kind of afraid to, and now I feel bad because, like, it's she, been two weeks. She must know I'm alive by now. Why? Because other Has heroes he have stuff? met me. Oh, yeah, he yeah, ran okay. into Batman. He's talked to other characters. Right. They all like showed up in the last volume. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, I gotta like, I I literally left heaven, but I can't make a single phone call. Mm -hmm. Like, what is my problem? So then he's going to pick up the phone Wait, and call. Wait, was it his choice to leave heaven and come back? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like, they just grabbed right. him no. and pulled him out of yeah. heaven. Get the hell out of here. No, no I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, no, they go there. They're like, come on, Ollie. Like, you want to come with us? And he's like, okay. Like, it takes some time. Yeah, yeah. yeah heaven's boring. <laughs> yeah. No, he's having a great time. He's happy. <laughs> he's dead. So uh, he's well, like. better than the other option. 
No, oh, that's mm. true. So he's like, we'll talk about like your future is speedy later. For now, I'm gonna go be Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so she interrupts his attempt to call. Yes. So he doesn't. Call. So he's, wasn't he, doesn't call. he like just out helping people all day, and now he's gonna do more stuff at night? Does he sleep? <laughs> that's 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 every vigilante. <laughs> yeah. Superpower. When does Batman sleep? <laughs> yeah. We've established he's Bruce Wayne all day, and then he's Batman all night. Yeah. No. No, he's never Bruce Wayne. Like he's, he is always Bruce Wayne. He's, he's Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Like maybe two out of five days. He's Bruce. You know, he has to make appearances. He has to go to Wayne Enterprises. He's, he's he is public. He's public, but at the same time, like. He could just be in an office and sleep. So anyway, uh, Green Arrow's going around like shooting people with arrows, and, like giving them a hard time. Sweet. And he's also like making a making a point where he's like he stopped a mugging and like an attack, and he shot people with arrows, and he like lets one of them leave after like impairing them with uh, arrows in their body. Are the rest of them dead? No, he just kind of kicked their ass. <laughs> yeah, they're just wounded. They're just wounded. But he's like, yeah, you can go. Like, take this, take this bloody arrow I stabbed into your arm. I shot into your arm as like a token of reminder. I'm trying to spread my legend again, get people like right. aware of me. Right. So he he and um, the other guys are gonna get away, but Connor Green Arrow is at the end of the end of the alley, mm -hmm. and he helps out. So you got okay. like these two, this father and son duo, being both Green Arrows, kicking the crap out of people and having a great time. Okay. Cool. So they go home. And they find Mia on the roof shooting targets with her crossbow. Uh -huh. And Connor kind of goes like, hey, that was nice. And she's like, hey, you're kind of nice too. What's going on? We're both kind of like teenagers, I guess. Whatever. And Arrow's like, no. I'm already having no, sex with no, no, about no, your no. dad, so right. you're probably better. <laughs> exactly. Why not? Probably not. <laughs> Ali is kind of, a, kind of a ladies' man. I mean, Ali is. I just mean like... Better appropriated. Yeah, more oh, appropriated. No, better certainly better more appropriate by every stretch. I'm, I'm just saying I think Ollie's a better lover than Connor. But that's my assumption. <laughs> I don't really know. Anyway. I, I look forward to that back issues discussion one day. Right? Yeah. We'll talk now we're going to rank that. the top DC lovers. <laughs> <laughs> that would do better than any video on this channel we've ever made. <laughs> so then he sets up a date with Dinah. We don't see oh, that happen. Yeah. Oh. We just cut to it later. Okay. Dinah's set up at the Justice Society of America's headquarters. Because Black Canary is a member of the JSA. Okay. All right. And she's getting ready for this date, and it's kind of like a like a like a reacquaintance date. It's yeah. not gonna be like a super romantic date. Right. Because like the fact is, when Ali died, Dinah and Ali had already broken up. Oh really? Yeah. Like, oh. and so when Ali comes back, he's like, "Woo! I'm happy, and I miss Dinah, and like all I wanted was to be with you." And it's like, yeah, you 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 missed all the garbage of our relationship not working out. Right. So of course you think it's great. Um, now, of course, he's like, I'm both halves, and I'm, I still miss you. So he, he, he sets up this, like, getting-to-know-you date. All right. Um, Stargirl lets Dinah know that Ollie's here, and she left him with Hawkman. And Kevin Smith remembers that, like, Ollie is a super left-leaning liberal, and Hawkman is kind of like an ultra-conservative. Hmm. And so... Well, in Hawk society. I mean, right, it's very right-wing. <laughs> so, yeah, they have both. Yeah. <laughs> they no, should be smack really dab work. in the middle. Right? Yeah. No, it makes, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, the right wing is the dominant in any bird, of course. Of course. Oh, I mean, just like you're right-handed, right? Yeah. So Stargirl's like, I left him with Hawkman. She's like, oh my god, are you serious? No, you can't leave those two alone together. For all we know, they're like killing each other. And she bursts open the door and they're laughing. They're just having a great time, yucking it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's like, what's going on here? Did we get attacked by the Joker? Like, why are they... <laughs> Having a great time. And he's like, no, we were just making fun of Batman. Huh. <laughs> and right. We can always find common ground. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I'm a conservative or a liberal. We still hate the same person. That's right. Well, we still like to make fun of the 1%. Yeah. Uh, Isn't Ollie the 1%? Yes. Yeah, but like Ollie keeps giving away his money uh, or like working in soup kitchens. Like you never see Wayne do that. No. Alfred. No, he just has a billion Alfred, shatter readings. Alfred, go to the soup kitchen. <laughs> and it worked for me. <laughs> Certainly, and then I'll come back and make food for you. Yeah, that's I mean, right. Alfred would love to work in a soup kitchen because then people will actually eat his cooking. Right. <laughs> so Hawkman's like, "Come on, do it. Do, do your impression of Batman." And so Green Arrow goes. So Green Arrow goes. I tend to expect the unexpected. <laughs> and Hawkman's like, "Oh my God, you did the cape. <laughs> you only did the voice before. That's great." I, I, I love nice. the, the, the the portrayal of that. Yeah. Amazing. And. Uh, so they're having a great time. Dinah makes a gay joke at their expense because it's... Uh, and uh, so anyway, Dinah's like, 
uh, we're going on a date. Why are you dressed like Green Arrow? And he's like, oh, because I was kicking ass and taking names and coming over here, and I was kind of late, so I thought I'd just, like, borrow some clothes here at the mansion and just kind of get ready. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Do you have anything in my size? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Hawkman basically says, listen. Like, so Dinah leaves, and Hawkman's like, listen. Dinah is not really over you or the guy she was with after you died. Mm. Like, she's in a vulnerable place. Don't sleep with her. Mm. Whatever you do, right? Don't sleep with Dinah uh-huh. for the yeah, love of God. Yeah, he's like, aha, uh-huh, of course. Yeah, All right. Sleep with Dinah. Got, Got it. it. No, don't sleep with Dinah. Don't, don't not, not sleep, sleep with, with Dinah. Dinah. I feel like you're gonna sleep with Dinah, and I'm asking you not to. I already did. As my fr- what? <laughs> twice. No, I mean, na- I mean after this. So, okay. Ollie's like, right on. You could count on me, buddy. No problem. No problem. So they go out on this date, and they're just talking and. Ollie is flirting with her, and Dinah's like, stop. Mm. Like, I can't. I can't do this. Yeah, I can't stop. I can't That's stop. who I am. So, uh, but it's also working. Mm-hmm. And they have this whole back and forth about how, like, Dinah's like, I'm not even sure. Like, I'm kind of also a little bit in a relationship. Like, it's not kind of, it's kind of mm. unclear, because, like, I think it's almost Kevin Smith being like, I mean, like, I saw, I asked someone at DC if Dinah was in a relationship, and they said, like, kind of Dr. Midnight, but, like, I don't remember. And I don't know what issue it was. So just, if you have to address it, just say that she's not really sure where they are right now. Okay. Because okay. no one's going to pursue that anyway. Right. And Kev's like, got it. So, you know, Ollie makes fun of him for being like, you know, a bird type person. I mean, he's not really a bird person, but he has like a, a pet <laughs> owl. And uh, He's a bird person in the sense that he likes birds, not that he is, is a one. man bird. Like Hawkman. Like Hawkman. Like yeah. Hawkman. He's a literal bird or person. Or bird person. Yeah. Bird person. <laughs> It's been a challenging meeting season for bird person. <laughs> and for Ollie. So ever since Ollie showed up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Ollie's like, yeah, so listen, like, I'm sorry that I've been flirting with you and it's like messing with your head and everything, mm-hmm. but... It's hard to not. I'm in love with you. super hot. Oh, my God. No, literally. But, yeah. I, okay, I know you said to take it slow yeah. and like really kind of rein it in. So here's what I'm going to say. Last thing I'm going to say about this. I'm desperately in love with you, and when I was in heaven, all I thought about was being with you. That's so, all I want to say. So That's how all. is it heaven, then? Because more bread. <laughs> well, like, yeah, people aren't... Your loved ones, you're still going to miss them conceivably yeah. if you're in heaven, I guess. You're happy otherwise. Yeah. But you're still miss You're people. content, but, like, you know, it'd be fun. It would be, I think it would be hollow if it's like, heaven's just whatever you want. So it's like, oh, cool, then I'll manufacture all my friends from, from Earth that aren't alive. <laughs> Uh, or that are alive, and just hang out like with them until they get here. Meat puppets, right? Like what? <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't. Yeah. No, but yeah. then again, like heaven wouldn't be heaven if all you did was to go like, cool. You seem pretty sad. I'll just wait until you die. Then, then you'll we'll come be up hanging here. out. Like, <laughs> just seems, I hope. Seems well, rather... don't do anything bad. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to the other place. Yeah. Oh no! They accidentally Stop. killed that guy. Ah oh, shit. Well. Well, that sucks for me. <laughs> now I'm going to be even more sad. But how does this affect me, really? Right, because it's all about <laughs> us. It's egocentric. Yeah, how did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So we consider uh, letting you in. Yeah, right. God's like, wait a minute. Hey, you're kind of an idiot. What the hell is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not evil, asshole. though. Yeah. Enough. All right. I'm going to create, like, another wing to this place. <laughs> There's going to be, like, more tears. <laughs> Like two, yeah. Like, there are circles of hell. In, yeah. So we just have, we just, have just a big open field full of everybody. I don't think so. Yeah. We gotta start. We gotta <laughs> come up with a plan. <laughs> so anyway, the Riddler attacks the restaurant. Oh no. Yeah. Exactly. The restaurant they're in. Yeah. He's like, riddle me this. I'm gonna steal all your money. <laughs> like, God damn it, Riddler. Riddler. <laughs> no. Well, because like writing for Riddler is hard. Yeah. So uh, and don't be worried. Riddler's about to make a riddle. When Dinah just punches him in the face. Like, nice. that way I don't have to be clever, but I can still use the Riddler. Right. Uh, Ollie grabs some, like, some kebab skewers and goes over to a conveniently placed harp and then, like, fires oh, them man. at Riddler. <laughs> yep. And his goons. Okay. And so Black Canary and Oliver Queen in their civilian outfits kick the crap out of Riddler and his goons. And then everyone, like, kind of, like, cheers for them. And then they make out. And yep. then Ollie's like, I think we'll take our dinner to go. <laughs> so then they bang. Yep. And Hawkman's just hovering outside the window being like, I told you not to do this, man. Oh, man. 
Not cool. I can hear you out there. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 flapping kind of like matched my rhythm for a while. That's... So like after we were done though, it didn't stop, and I'm like, oh. Did they just reveal their secret identities, or have they already done that? I, uh, like, <laughs> are there secret identities for these characters? Black well, hair doesn't wear a mask. Oh, also, she, she didn't, like, no. scream at anybody. She didn't scream, but, but he like, does wear a mask. He does. But, like, I think it's more just because it looks cool at this point. He makes a point of saying who his real name is to, like, a couple of doctors later, and it's like... Okay. So, I guess all bets are off. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, like... He doesn't care. You don't need a secret identity if you're rich. Right. So that's how it works. Unless you're Batman. Because all your rogues are psycho murderers from an asylum. Yeah, who'll just kill everyone that ever, like, knew you. Yes. To get to you. Yeah. It, it doesn't quite work, but... Sure. We're just going to ignore it. Yeah, okay. Kevin Smith doesn't give a shit. No. <laughs> so, and, it's, and it would impede the progress of the story. The story sure. kind of, like, moves that is a pretty, fun pretty swiftly. It's a fun scene. They, they beat up some guys together, and then they're like, all right, now for the, poist, uh, the post-fight bang. Yeah. Right. Right. So they do bang, and uh, they make a lot of sexual innuendo references throughout the whole series, but particularly in here, mm. where they talk about how, like, there's no, you know, I don't, I don't know if, I think I have one more left in my quiver, you know, because like, <laughs> we've had sex, like, a few times, uh -huh. and then, you know. It's so like it's a James like, Bond movie. I may be able to knock one out one more time, but I got to go visit Sherwood Forest first. And so he goes down on her, you know, because there's a bush. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. Jesus no, Christ, you, you man. Get me? Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, so then, Smith. I yeah. Know, I mean, what do you want from me? Yeah. You want his name on the marquee, you're going to get scenes like that. Yeah. <laughs> so then we cut to this uh, superhero named Virago, who is really cool looking, hmm. uh, but then she gets murdered. Hmm. So oh. it doesn't matter. She's oh. created for the story to die. Gotcha. But she's kind of a fun, interesting character. Uh, but she gets shot at by a trank dart, and she lands in an alley, and. She makes a sound when she falls. She hits the garbage cans in the alleyway. It says, crash, bang, kirsch. And then a man steps in frame who says, crash, bang, kirsch. And then she faces off against this character, this new character that Kevin Smith created, who's like a new villain for, for Green Arrow. They call yeah. me Onomatopoeia. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talked about we this guy. We talked about Onomatopoeia. Yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, Onomatopoeia debuts in this book. Okay. And so, you know, she says like, no, please, why? And he goes, blam. And then the gun says blam, and he kills her. He just shoots her in the face. Uh, huh. Onomatopoeia will do this at least one more time. Uh, Screw it, we'll just cut to it. So then we cut to, like, another hero whose name is Bucky or Buckeye. Let's go with Buckeye. Yeah. Because we don't want to get lawyers involved. Mm -hmm. but, well, is uh, it Buck E-Y-E? Yes. Yeah, it's Buckeye. So Buckeye has stopped a pretty lame supervillain named Panacea. And, <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's a run-of-the-mill, like, superhero who is on his way in upward mobility. Okay. It's a very weird name for a supervillain panacea because that usually is like a health I thing. Know. Well, I Well, I think he's like obsessed with, I don't know. All right. I, I think, I think he's, I think the, his, and oh, his MO. Oh, he's the cure for he's, everything? Yeah, he's the, his, his problem is with Humanity's like. Humanity's a disease. No. I am the <laughs> cure. cure. <laughs> no, his, his whole thing is he kills like lawyers and people who thinks are like drains on society. Oh. So, uh, Buckeye comes home and he's hearing this like drip in his bathroom and when he enters the bathroom Onomatopoeia is saying drip and uh, Buckeye's girlfriend is strung up murdered with a knife in her shower and her blood is dripping into the shower and then Onomatopoeia says all the Onomatopoeias that appear in this sequence where he fights Buckeye and then just shoots him in the face. Wow. Uh, Buckeye's also, not very good at his job. That's why you never heard of him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the scene is more haunting than I'm portraying it because like he's this is really freaking creepy. His girlfriend's dead. Yeah. He's crying while yeah. he's fighting Onomatopoeia. Yeah. It's rough. Yeah. Uh, but we're trying to establish like what a badass and how scary Onomatopoeia can be right. because like Kevin Smith's whole uh, conceit for Onomatopoeia was it's a supervillain that could only exist in comics mm -hmm. because he can make sound effects that you're used to in comics. Blam, pow, snicked. He can make those, and it sounds identical to the sounds that those onomatopoeias are portraying. Right. How does that help him 
<laughs> yeah, so be a super why villain. would he do that? Now, when I first heard about him on I thought like, oh, cool. So like, he can have like his hand like this, say blam. Right, and it'll like... And it'll like conjure a bullet be, or make yeah. people like... Yeah, it's like being in the Matrix where it's yeah. like, you think you were shot, so you die. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> it's that's, just a that's weird That's just how thing I communicate. It, he also talks. So no, he just does that too. Maybe it's to lure people into things. You know, like you right. hear a thing and then you come in. I don't know. But that sucks. But it kind of sucks. Yeah. It, that's not what he did to Virago. No, he didn't do that to either. He shot her with well, a trank gun. Yes, he like did. like he lured her to him. No, but he, he, did, he actually lured her to him by playing a tape of a woman screaming. But he didn't make the sound of a woman screaming. No. He played a freaking cassette tape. Yeah, so he didn't use his power at all. To lure her. To lure her. her or change the outcome in any way. Nope. <laughs> It's just a, it's just a, it's just the a fun little affectation he's got. Yeah. I'm, I'm also a little confused Weird. by his mask. It's just a cool looking mask. Oh, why is it a bullseye? Well, are they sound waves? I think they're sound waves. Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot of the mystique out of bullseye. He's got poke his own no, nose. No, if you go bullseye, you got to go up here. If you do this, it's boop. I mean, I'm just saying, his face, has his face is a bullseye. It's literally right. just a bullseye right. went like this. Boop. I don't know. I, I'm on a PM. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I mean, like, I think it's a sound wave. I okay, think I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Because because if he did, like, a pictorial version of a Doppler effect, it would be weird looking. <laughs> sure. But that's definitely his logo. Yeah. Because later he'll, like, draw it. And, you know, as a calling card. That's dumb. Okay. Yeah, all right. So Ollie slept with Dinah, and he's like, I feel kind of bad, because like, I know when she wakes up, she's going to give me a speech about how it was a mistake, and how we shouldn't be doing this. We went too fast. And here I am sneaking out like before she can wake up, so I can avoid this conversation. <laughs> and that's yeah. like, uh, literally... God, I'm such an adult. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, you know what, though? These are people. Yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. But uh, he leaves, and he finds that Hawkman's outside, and he's like... What did I just say? I was hovering the whole time. Naturally, he's been listening in on the entire conversation. Yeah. So, Dinah wakes up. By the way, you're going to go to Sherwood Forest? Please. My God, Woof. man. <laughs> so, they're arguing outside. Uh -huh. Dinah wakes up from her post-coitus unconsciousness, uh -huh. hearing them bitch about having yeah. just done that. Yeah. And she's like, oh my God. Like, please. And then, like, Hawkman is like, this is your problem, man. Like, you, I need to count on her when we're fighting as a team. And you're the reason she's a broken mess of a person. And she's like, okay. <laughs> so she gets up and she flings the door open, naked as the day she was born, as Green Arrow and Hawkman are about to fight. Oh, my God. Uh, this battle rouses a few other members of the JSA, including Mr. Terrific and Stargirl. The reason we got Mr. Terrific is because Terrific uses these things called Terrificspheres, which right. we've covered in Future's End, one of the greatest yeah. comic books of all time, uh, and or T-Spheres. And so she uses her scream to separate the two of them. And then she realizes she's naked and she's like, Terrific, you want to help me out? So Terrific sends his Terrificspheres to cover her nipples and <laughs> vagina. And her butt. Yes. Yeah. Your clothes are in the other room. Just go back in the room and get them. No, I want to have this conversation now. So. All right. Th she, that like, is bad writing. So she, she gives them a hard time. No, it's just a way for us to like yeah, see so some good. See how naked Look at she how is. Hot yeah. this is. Super hot. Right? Come on. So anyway, she says like, oh, man. Um, how come Ollie isn't also naked and like holding well, his clothes in front of him? Because he was leaking out. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he was ditching her. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, it's good for the goose, good for the gander, man. That would be more equitable. Or the hawk. So then uh, she's like, standing there with these like terrific spears on him, on her, and he goes, "Man, you got some balls on you. Get it?" And then she goes, "Yes, I do get it. And that's the last thing that you'll be doing for a long time." And then she leaves. <laughs> and that's the last getting it you'll be getting. That's what she's yeah. saying. Yeah. So then they all just like look at him, like, "Shouldn't you be ashamed of yourself?" And he uh -huh. goes. She's crazy about me. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ. And you're like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Ollie goes home. Yeah. Meets up with Mia. Uh, Mia and Connor having breakfast. And uh, Mia heard about the, like, date because it was covered on the news. <laughs> like, uh -huh. everybody's like, oh, for Queen, Green Arrow, and Black Canary, like, made out. And then maybe, I guess, they were going to bang. Because they said, <laughs> check, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Why are you doing it in the voice of the guy announcing the Saturday Night Live cast? <laughs> that's what I mean, that's basically the guy on the news. Just like, here's some news. Because it's bullshit news. Not really anything worth saying out loud, but they did it anyway for exposition purposes. Well, I mean, like, if that's the news that's being covered, it's pretty much just like, you know, bullshit tabloids right. anyway. Garmin Arnar. <laughs> so Mia so, makes a joke about eating out. Oh, jeez. So then she, not stop. And he, like, spits his orange juice everywhere and is like, go to school. And then he sits down and has, like, pancakes with Connor, and he's like... But I did, and I made a joke about Sherwood Forest, right? <laughs> and Connor's like, like, nice, Christ Dad! Dad! <laughs> High five! Oh. And he's like, oh, right, just kidding, you're gross! <laughs> anyway, Way so... Way to go, Connor. Uh, Connor leaves, and he goes, hey, Connor. And Connor comes back and he goes, it's really nice having you around. And oh. he's like, I was just about to say the same thing, Dad. And you're like, hey, it's working. Spoilers, it doesn't end with them, like, hating each other. Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, just, it's like, oh, this is setting up a horrible fallout yep. yeah. between them. No, nope. it's just... No, it's going to set up when Connor dies. Yeah. Oh, or that. No. Mm. So, they uh, they stop a... Uh, Connor... The, the Green Arrows stop a woman from getting attacked and assaulted uh, in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the one guy gets away, so Connor chases after him. And when he opens the door to reach the guy... The guy's head is missing. God Ooh. damn it. And Onomatopoeia makes the sound like the door is going to close. Creak. Uh -huh. So that Connor thinks the door is going to close. And he turns around and Onomatopoeia's got an axe, which he used to chop off that guy's head. Yeah. He's going to kill these, these two arrows. Yeah. You know? So he he swings his axe. And as he's about to swing, it's great. The, the sequence is like he's going to swing it. And he goes, schwaff. As though it's gonna like swing, uh -huh. but instead Connor shoots off an arrow and it goes thwack, and he goes thwack. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. Yeah. Like, this, this, this is the sequence. When you fight Onomatopoeia, it's all gonna be sound gags yep. slash sound references. Uh -huh. I will do no more. <laughs> so he just throws the stump away, and then he takes out his gun and he just shoots Connor in the head. Oh. So that was fast. Arrow picks up Connor, brings him to a hospital, and he's like, I need a doctor here right now. The news reports that Green Arrow has been shot in the head. So Mia hears that Green Arrow has been shot in the head. So she's like, oh shit, Ollie's dead. So she runs off to the hospital where, you know, <laughs> where he's been taken. Uh, Black Canary is kicking ass and taking names, being Black Canary. When she hears from her pals at the JSA that the news is reporting that Green Arrow has been shot. And she's like, oh man, like I'm going to need a teleport, like. The J S the the J L A can teleport you anywhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. So they teleport me to the near it's like to that hospital. So she gets teleported there, which is how she gets there so fast. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the writing. Yes, like there they have a reason for her to suddenly be there. Right, that's good. Thank so, you. So uh, <laughs> Connor's being operated on. Ollie's watching. Mia All right, shows so he's up. still alive. This yes. is not like a, I brought him to the hospital because I. I, I just know didn't know what else to do, do but he's brain's really Yeah, out. no, they're doing brain surgery, basically. Yeah. And uh, so Mia shows up. She's like, I thought you were... He's like, no, they, we haven't changed our names or anything. So. <laughs> I know, it's confusing. Yeah, so it, it's it's just cool. Like, the the sequence is just like, I, I, this is my fault. Hmm. This, is a, this is a perfect example of why I don't want Mia being speedy. Right. And... How I'm irresponsible, I let him go off on his own, and Dinah's like, it's not your fault. He's like, well, my boy is dying, so how else am I supposed to take it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Ollie's like, okay, well, I gotta go find, the, I, I can't, I can't help with brain surgery, I don't, right. have, I don't have an arrow for that. <laughs> He's like, the only thing I can do is like, go find the guy who shot my boy and then probably murder him with arrows. Yes. Yeah. Anamanapia is watching the news, and they announce that like, it would why is that? Why not have Anapia cut that guy's head off to lure them outside? Oh, maybe he thought that that guy was going to be Green Arrow. Oh. You know, because he was just hiding behind the door with an axe. Yeah, so he's probably just swinging at anyone who went through that door. Right. The fact is, Anapia, when he first shows up in this, and for a little while after this, his mo is he kills street level non power DC superhero vigilantes. <laughs> why? <laughs> because he can. Because otherwise he would die. Right. He can't kill because he can't kill Superman. Right. And he's got to kill somebody. And it so can't why be regular people. Arrow. Yeah, and it can't be regular people, and it can't be characters that we care about. So let's invent some to show the stakes of how right. effective Anamanapia is, so that when he is immediately defeated by Green Arrow, it won't be quite so pathetic. Uh, <laughs> later on, Kevin Smith will then use Anamanapia again when he writes his own Batman book, 
but we'll get there one day, maybe. Uh, all I, right. I doubt it. So, Automata sees in the news, like everybody else did, apparently, that, you know, Green Arrow's there. Yeah. Uh, he's, Green Arrow's going to go look for Automata when the doctor's like, hey, whoa, where are you going? And he's like, uh, I'm going to go kick ass. Kick kill things. that guy. I'm going to kill that guy with my arrows. And they're like, your boy is dying and he needs, a, he needs blood. You're his father, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, then get the hell in here. We're yeah. going to take your blood. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. That, right, that makes I guess a lot more sense now. now. Yeah. So then, like, he's on the table. They take a bunch of blood. He's groggy. Yeah. You know, so. Automata Peel walks in. Naturally. Well, like, <laughs> uh, you know, Ollie goes into recovery. He's drinking orange juice. Uh, you know, <laughs> eating the, cookies. Eating cookies, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Anamata Pia comes in uh, and he makes uh, a he makes a sipping sound because Ollie's oh been doing that uh -huh. to show that he's there. Uh, I've been here the whole time. He yeah. gives away his presence. Exactly. Ollie chases after him. Uh, Anamata Pia Media starts collapses. <laughs> he's 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 got some resolve. Okay. Uh, he, it's been a, it's been a couple hours, I guess. Yeah. It, we need Dinah to be teleported to articulate that like Anamata Pia would take more time to get to the hospital. Right. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I got you. The the book actually does, unlike this episode, go at a breakneck speed. So like, <laughs> you you kind of forgive those moments. Yeah, if you're not it's analyzing. Just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So what? He just he's just killing people in the hospital. He just he's just killing people. On, yeah, basically. Are the police coming or? Uh, uh conceivably. <laughs> All right. So he's killing people. Just blam, 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 blam. He went and winds up in the theater where they're operating on Connor. All he right. kills one of the doctors. Jesus. Black Canary screams at him. Breaks through. He shoots her in the arm. Uh, Mia doesn't do anything. Yeah. How, how could she? And he's about to shoot Connor again in the head yeah. when he is shot through the shoulder by an arrow. And ar and so Ollie's like, okay, like, get away from my boy. You know, knocks another arrow. He's ready to go. He's got him trained on his face. Yeah. And he says, like, out he looks at the doctors and he's like, okay, there's at least a couple of doctors still alive. He's like, is the anesthesia is still alive? And he's like, Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> just check on the kid. I've got this guy. And then he goes, any neurosurgeon still alive? Yes. Keep working. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, like Terry's dead. He's like, get the fuck up and start working on him. I don't give a shit about Terry. My boy needs your help. <laughs> yeah. So he's like telling the doctors, like, go get back to work and ignore the dead men that work you work with. Right. And don't worry. I've got this guy trained in my sights. Yeah, basically. And he's like, okay, so we're good. Mia, go outside and tell them, like, tell everybody that, like, Oh, there's another person there. Like, the, the, tell the attending nurse like to go work on Dinah, get her out of here, uh -huh. work on her shoulder. Uh, Mia, you go outside and tell the police who are coming that like I've got this covered, and to surround the building and everything. Yeah. And tell them like that the Justice League is fighting a big time supervillain. They'll stay away. So, <sighs> so Ollie kind of like commands the whole situation. He's right. Like, got it all. He, and he sets it up so that like. Nobody's going to bother him, so he has the option to murder this guy. Exactly. Yeah. But also, he doesn't. Well, yeah, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it, and he's got the arrow, like, on the target yeah. of Onomatopoeia's face. That's really why his logo yes. are those two like that. Okay. Yeah. Is so, that so, so you can have these So we can have there. a bullseye. Yes. And it's great, because he's like, okay, so explain yourself. Like, why are you trying to kill my boy? Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I don't care. The reality is, like, you're dead anyway. Lift up your mask. And then Automata <laughs> just goes, wine, bitch, moan. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So just lift up your mask and open your mouth. <laughs> so he sticks the arrow in Automata Pia's mouth and he goes, if he dies, so do you. All right. I mean, I'm still going to kill you. <laughs> uh, well, well still we, a hero. we don't know. Yeah. But after half an hour, they've removed the bullet and he's going to make it. Okay. And then he's distracted. So Anamapia bites down on the arrow, which keeps it from being fired. Yeah. Yep. And then Anamapia like flips over and kicks him, and then tries to run away. Yeah. Okay. Good job, Ali. It's not a gun. It's not like a bullet that comes out of a <laughs> yeah. barrel. My whole thing is arrows in someone's mouth. <laughs> I have to look cool and a badass. So this is my move. I put it in his mouth. Uh, maybe you should have kept it's a not, couple feet back from him. Not a thing. Put an arrow in someone's mouth. I've never seen that before. It's I know, right? That's like if I put it against your chest and I held it there. Right. I could let go, but it wouldn't go it anywhere. May not, it may not just shoot through you. Right? No, the sternum's rather strong. Uh, so anyway, Ollie like shoots him through the wrist and the hands and everything. Hmm. Uh, so he can't full shoot. Arrows. Fills cool. him full of arrows. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh -huh. Ollie chases after him, and they, they just have a cool rooftop fight where ultimately. Ollie like leaps off the roof. Anamapia goes to the 
edge of the roof. And then I like jabs an arrow into his foot. Nice. And then they fight. And then Anamanapia kind of like just kind of jumps back and like pulls the arrow through his foot to escape. Uh-huh. And plummets conceivably to his death. Oh. We cut to later. Yeah. When, like in recovery when Connor's okay. Yeah. And he's explaining to him like everything that just happened. Right. And he says like. What? Was he down there, Dad? So was he down there? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? They're usually there. <laughs> they usually just die. <laughs> Ah. No, instead, there's just blood that's in the shape of his logo. Weird. And he's like, so he's just out there. And yep. he'll never know, like, who he was or what he was doing or why. Uh, I guess I should have had him lift up his mask, like, all the, the way. way. Yeah. Uh, and so Mia shows up, and she's like, come on, like, I'll, Connor, I'll bring you home, and I'll, I'll play night nurse with you. And ho-ho. And Ollie's like, no. <laughs> you, you were a child. Get the hell out of here. You know, Ollie's, like, drifting off. And Donna's like, hey. You paying attention? He goes, I was just listening to the sound of family. Oh, Like, they were bickering. We're just sitting yeah. here, like, in, like, together. Right. And, uh, and they all kind of look similar. Yeah. Yet they're all blonde. Right? Oh, because uh, Dinah is normally a brunette. And right. Ollie makes a point after they bang where he's like, sorry, I pulled your hair. And she's like, oh, no, I kind of liked it. And he's like, I was trying to take off your wig because she normally has a wig. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I figured, like, why? Like, why keep doing the thing with the wig? I just grew it out and dyed it blonde. Huh. He's like, fair enough. He's okay. like, all right. So they're all blonde. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's a, it's a really, really sweet scene. It's undercut by a terrible gay joke, which I'm going to spare you. Uh, uh, but the, the story wraps the up hell? with, like, Ollie and his family kind of being together. Yeah. And that being said, naturally, Mia does become the new Speedy in of the course. future. Yeah. She's also HIV positive because of her days as a prostitute. Oh, wow. Uh, which is not a Kevin Smith invention, which is odd because he huh. did that in Daredevil where he gave... Karen Page, yeah. HIV, although it was actually a ruse. She didn't really have HIV. And you can find out more about that over there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Mia becomes like an HIV positive superhero. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she becomes speedy. And ultimately, by the way, doesn't die. Wow. All the way up okay. to, the, to the reboot. Wow, all right. Which is kind of miraculous. Yeah. Uh, Onomatopoeia is actually like a suburban family man with like children and a wife. And he's just like, I'm a dick. And he has like a secret lair where he keeps the masks of all the people he's killed. Naturally, he only has like two of them. Right. But like still, but it's Ooh. an ongoing, you know, it's a virgin collection. Yeah. Uh, Do they ever go into like what started his like obsession with no, heroes? No, because nobody cares about Amanapia except for right. him. And uh, also like what his power has to do with him killing anybody. Right. right. Well, they just, yeah. he just uses it. How I did guess. he get it? I'm a right. ventriloquist. I, because, I'm really good at making sounds. And they make a point to say like he might be like a metahuman, but like if he is, it's just like he has increased strength and agility. <laughs> like the lamest power ever. I know, right. I know. What's funny about Onomatopoeia and Arrow and Kevin Smith is that Kevin Smith, of course, is no stranger to the CW universe. He was brought in to direct a number of shows, including Flash and Supergirl. Mm-hmm. And he has been a fan of the Arrow show for a long time. Okay. And he was like, man, I've had such a claim making these other CW shows. Wouldn't it be cool if I directed an Arrow show and brought an Onomatopoeia? And oh my god! Stop trying to make that one happen. I would love it if he brought that <laughs> offer to the table, and yeah. CW's like, no. Yeah, he uh, did, and they did. Lame. But that's only because the people at Arrow apparently hate him <laughs> and want nothing to do with him. <laughs> they have like stonewalled his efforts to work on that show in every respect. That's really funny. Meanwhile, his work on Flash celebrated. They love him, and they're like, come back anytime. You want to become, like, a TV director, you can work on Flash. Yeah. Like, come on! No, we're good yeah. with this. He's quippy. He's fun. Yeah, like, this is a good place for you. And, incidentally, the Arrowverse has taken Onomatopoeia and, like, broken him up into multiple characters. So, like, they've used elements of Onomatopoeia in other CWS characters. What? They've never quite done Onomatopoeia. What, what I guess, elements of him? Like, that he makes sounds or that he dresses like that. Like, just okay. elements Those that are, two. like, clearly <laughs> referential to Onomatopoeia. Gotcha. I guess so that you can't have him... Like, we already have It could be a way to being like, oh, no, we were done at this point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've already done everything that is him and the other characters. So and, they, and they specifically do it to keep Kevin Smith out and be like, well, we already have all these. Th- it'd be pro- problematic for the show. It could be. Sorry. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> because, like, no one in Hollywood can just say, like, I don't like you and no. <laughs> I, I, I don't like you. Like, oh, I don't like that character. Yeah, no. They, they have to be like, oh, I love I, you. Here's what I'm doing with him. <laughs> 
No, <laughs> if, if they did that, it would be, no, we put on an RP episode, and then we made him the butt of every joke, and we murdered yeah. him at the end. Right, exactly. <laughs> That'd be awesome. We also made him, like, from New Jersey, and gave him a beard, <laughs> and, like, no. And he wears a hockey wears jersey a hockey all the time. Jersey. Right. I, now... <laughs> they can't just say, like, no. They have to be like, oh, I love that idea, Kev. You know, I'm such a big fan of your work. Uh, you just, you just, the scheduling just isn't quite right this time, but you wait for my agent to call you, who never does. And I'll pretend like I have your email address. Like, just the two-faced people. Yep. <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, but anyway, uh, this book is fun and lighthearted. And if you can get past, like, the, the rampant sexual innuendo, yeah, which, like, is... Look, I'm not a prude. I dig it. Yeah. I'm happy to see my char- my you know, these characters I read about like having fun and you know being adults. Yeah. Well, it's fine for them to be adults, but like how many sex jokes do you have to make in the book? Yeah. yeah I'm thinking like one? <laughs> nope. A couple. How about a know. dozen? Try many, many and, more. And by the way, like listen, if that's your bread and butter, I get it. I'm not going to give you a hard time about uh-huh. it. I'm just saying like it it's noticeable as you're reading the story. Yeah. But there is a germ of a great idea in here, and I'll put it in the description so you can grab a copy of it. Um, but yeah, I, Quiver, really strong. Sound of Violence, as strong thematically and story-wise, though I don't think I'm sold on Onomatopoeia as a character. Mm. Or the execution of it. Certainly not. My mind's eye of who Onomatopoeia was before being introduced to him years ago was better than the execution of Onomatopoeia. Mm-hmm. Well, because if that's someone's power, like, if you can say blam with your finger shaped like a gun, yeah. and you can kill someone with it, yes, You know what's funny cool. about that? But only if... That's if you can only speak in well, uh, sound effects. They did that then later with, an, with a very interesting character in Doomsday Clock. They, they created these new characters called Marionette and Mime. Marionette and Mime were allegories for Captain Adam villains that existed way back in the day. And because Dr. Manhattan is an allegory for Captain Adam, they were like, let's create some characters that are like that. But in the Watchmen universe, Marionette and Mime are basically like creepy Marionette and Mime themed villains. And Mime's whole thing is he like, he doesn't speak and he mimes what he's doing, but he doesn't really have powers because he's in the Watchmen universe. Right. Spoilers for Doomsday Clock, they come to the DC universe... And he gets powers. His powers are what he's doing. So he can, like, create oh. piano wire out of nothing. And he can, like... And he shoots, like, a fake gun and it kills people. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's cool! That is cool. It really works. Doomsday Clock is not terrible. <laughs> if it ever finishes, I uh-huh. promise we'll talk about it. <laughs> Doomsday Clock was supposed to be a big initiative that was going to, like, reface and fix and, like, change DC. Right. As a publishing house. Yeah. Oh. And instead, it became, like, a kind of neat book that will come out one day. Yeah. So, like, it's fuck you. It's from everything. Yeah. So, like, everything that was, that ha- all of its weight is gone. Yep. <sighs> he, he really found that funny. I know yeah. he did. Thank you. So... Sounds of Violence from Green Arrow. It's a fun story. Check it out. We'll see you guys next time on another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Bye. I'm, I'm amazed there was no Simon and Garfunkel reference in this. What? I know, right? <laughs> Sound of Silence. Oh. Yeah, no. But it really works Sounds with Onomatopoeia because he is the literal he, Sounds of Violence. He is the Sounds of, yeah. Yeah, no, It everything about it. And really it is clever. a reference to that song, I assume. Sure. Because it rhymes. Right, why wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, by the way, the covers are great. Yeah, they do. Gorgeous covers. It's better art than's inside the book. The inside of the book yeah. is kind of cartoony. It's I hear what you're saying. It's not bad. I think it's good, but it's definitely cartoony. Right. So well, it's like, if you don't like that's that. That's Phil Hester's then. style. It's, it's very cartoony. And like, yeah, if you're not looking for that. And thematically speaking, like, is it really appropriate? Is it pl- applicable to the <sighs> subject matter? It, it, for the dialogue, it is, but not for what's happening. what's happening. Well, I think that actually helps it because you're not expecting that level of creepiness. That's true. Especially it's, from, uh, mm-hmm. from Onomatopoeia mm-hmm. in this book. Like, when the guy gets his head cut off, and it's oh, at yeah. his feet, and yeah. he's just like... It's a little bit jarring. Yeah. You see his head, you're like, yeah. whoa. Oh, shit. I did not see that coming. When no. you see the girlfriend hanging in the tub... Yeah, that's... Oh, and my it, God. And it doesn't look like an Archie comic. Like, it's actually jarring and scary. Yeah. So, I think it has, it's very different. The covers and the interiors are very different, but the covers are beautiful posters, and the interiors are a fun, service, serviceable story. And I think that the art helps to accelerate the speed of the book. Mm-hmm. Like it takes... You could you could read this book in like less than half an hour. Mm. Yeah, you're not also like busy looking at every little panel at the yeah, details. Yeah, there's not a lot. Right? You yeah, to, you don't have to pour over yeah. it. You can literally jump from panel to panel, and you're like, okay, it's well, very I got clear it what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Bye. <laughs>
twang. <laughs> For sure. <swip. laughs> <laughs> You got so uh, preoccupied by uh, thinking on whether or not you could, uh, you didn't stop to think if you should. Did you say preoccupied? Pre preoccupied, not preoccupied. Ben is normally preoccupied. That's yeah, with uh, mine. Yeah, that's to be. Uh, by the way, definition of preoccupied is uh, masturbating, to be obsessed with your dick. <laughs> You're just constantly adjusting yourself or masturbating or whatever it is. Oh my god. Whoa. We're talking about it. Ben's a little preoccupied. <laughs> that's. Uh, it's been five minutes before, since I haven't no, mentioned my dick. Well, I, dick. Well, I remember when we coined pre preoccupied uh, yep. and introduced it into the, into the zeitgeist. zeitgeist. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Fucking, uh, <laughs> how come Ben's wedding met late to his own wedding? Oh, he's a little preoccupied. <laughs> now, you never know when preoccupation's gonna <laughs> strike. Hey, you don't want the, that nervous boner when you're standing up in front of a bunch of people. That's right. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. No, you don't. No. Great point. Very valid. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Backish of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben.